William Gates is known for many things. His involvement with Microsoft, his wealth, and his role as an ethical billionaire. <laughs> I really hope I can keep that sign. What you may not know about is his mansion. After all, it's only mentioned in the marriage and divorce section of his Wikipedia page. Completed in 1997, the mansion was heralded by Business Insider as the ultimate smart home. And in his book, The Road Ahead, Bill wrote, as you come in, you'll be presented with an electronic pin to clip to your clothes. Uh, weird. The electronic pin you wear will tell the house who and where you are, and the house will use this information to try to meet and even anticipate your needs, all as unobtrusively as possible. Okay, maybe it's just me, but a pin you have to put on every time you enter the house does not sound as unobtrusive as possible. But don't worry, Bill speculated that one day cameras with facial recognition might replace these pins. Oh, good job, Billy Gates. Now whenever you invite guests over, you can tell them, Oh, don't mind the cameras that are tracking your every move. That's just so my house knows where you are. I guess that's better than telling your guests to wear tracking pins. Oh, and let's see what these pins actually do. They change the mood of the rooms you enter based on your presence. Maybe that's just higher level billionaire thinking, but personally I don't see the mood preference of the rooms I enter being worth turning my house into a personal surveillance state. And as it turns out, most people don't want a surveillance state house either. Turning on a light is already as easy as flipping a switch, and most people don't want to deal with any additional levels of complexity in simple tasks. But let's see what a smart home has to offer before writing it off. To understand the appeal of a smart home, I've renovated the average house floor plan into a fully functional smart home through the power of CG idealism. Yeah, no, it's just Blender. As you enter, the front door unlocks automatically when it senses your phone and initiates a series of actions around your house. First, the entry lights turn on, the color temperature being determined by the time of day. Next, the thermostat turns on the heater, but it also knows from weather information that it's sunny outside and that the sun is directed at the western side of the house. Knowing this, blinds on the western windows are rolled up to supplement the heater. As you're moving around the house, motion detectors on the light switches not only control the lights of the room you're in, but the heat as well, with vents automatically opening and closing depending on what room you're in. This not only saves energy by not heating the areas of the house that are unoccupied, but also heats rooms faster because all the heat generated by the heater is going to directly where it can be used. And of course, all the lamps and miscellaneous lights are turned on as well as the overhead lights when you enter a room. And now you move to the center of it all, the living room. As you turn on your TV and play your favorite show, the house recognizes that and puts the living room into theater mode. Like this means that the lights dim and the blinds close. Easy to buy without needing an expert or being one. But right huh. now, interesting show. We'll get back to that later. When you turn off the TV, the lights come back on, but this time they're a warmer color for the evening hours. And as you get into your room to go to bed, you touch the light switch for the first time today to turn it off. This signals to the house that you're going to bed. The thermostat sets itself a little lower. All the lights turn off, and the door makes sure that it's locked. But just like the metaverse, this ideal CG world didn't come to fruition. Wow. So that's pretty neat. So why didn't it? To understand what went wrong, we first have to look at compatibility. The smart home concept is one held back by compatibility. In order for the concept to work, multiple companies have to work together to make products. In my idealist walkthrough, I glossed over the topic of compatibility by showing everything just working. But in the real world, a bunch of smart home devices that don't connect are functionally useless. To solve this issue, smart home platforms like Apple HomeKit, Google Home, Amazon Alexa, and Samsung SmartThings were introduced. But the closed nature of these platforms created another compatibility issue. Now, device manufacturers have to choose which platforms for their device to support, with each additional platform adding complexity and cost. 
Platforms like Apple HomeKit, Google Home, Amazon Alexa, and Samsung SmartThings introduce the problem of vendor lock-in. Vendor lock-in, if you're unfamiliar, is the result of monopolistic vendor practices making people reliant on their services for products. This comes with significant switching barriers, which usually come in the form of limited compatibility, making it impossible for people to switch platforms without completely replacing half their home. So naturally, manufacturers decided to make things much, much worse with their own sub-platforms like Philips Hue and Belkin's Wemo. These sub-platforms introduced their own apps to control a manufacturer's devices, further segmenting the smart home space and forcing people down the trap of vendor locking. Even within these sub-platforms, compatibility problems persist as products are replaced with newer versions and apps are updated to exclude older products. To combat the compatibility issue, new inter-platform protocols like Thread and Matter were introduced. These platforms promised to hold together the ever-expanding smart home space. But even Thread and Matter come with the caveat that they don't work with everything, be it platform or individual device. As a side note, did you catch what Matter admitted in the video that played? They said that you need an expert, or to be an expert, in order to buy smart home products in the current world. While that video has been around for only half a year, some companies are still dragging their feet when it comes to supporting the Matter standard. All this is to say that if you went out and bought smart home products without considering compatibility, none of it is guaranteed to work together. But even if you painstakingly put together a list of products that work, you'll run into other problems. Some manufacturers will require an app on your phone and all the terms and conditions that come with it. Others require a monthly subscription fee, even after you drop $60 on a light bulb. And the worst part is when your device won't be able to connect to your Wi-Fi router due to incompatibility with 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz Wi-Fi, leaving you completely in the dark, quite literally in this sense. And this theme of being left in the dark only continues into the conversation of security. I left out any mention of cameras and smart speakers from my idealist walkthrough earlier for a reason. Smart home speakers have long been known to record people and their conversations, with human reviewers sometimes listening to these recordings in order to improve speech recognition. Whether or not you're comfortable with that is up to you. Security cameras are, ironically, the worst offender when it comes to security issues in the smart home. Earlier this year, it was discovered that Eufy cameras were uploading user footage to the internet where everyone could view a live stream from people's cameras. This is despite Eufy and its parent company Anchor claiming that their cameras only use local storage. Additionally, it's pretty well documented that Ring will hand over footage to police while subverting their users. In a case from earlier this year, a man in Ohio who owned Ring cameras around his home and business was asked by the local police department for footage involving an investigation. After he willingly complied with the request, he received notice from Ring that they were sending the rest of his footage to the police department regardless of his willingness. This included footage from inside the man's house that was unrelated to the investigation. With all these security issues, many people are left wondering whether or not the practical security of smart home security cameras are worth the encroachment on privacy and the recurring subscription cost. Practical security is why I mentioned the auto-unlocking door in a nonchalant way. The truth is, if any intruder really wanted into the house, they could just break a window. This is where preventative and corrective action come into play. Locks, lights, and cameras all work as preventative measures against potential home intruders. Things like that dissuade intruders as they decrease any chances that a home invasion will be successful. But you don't need a security camera to have the preventative effect of security cameras. Fake security cameras that look like security cameras but have no functional camera are made exactly for that purpose. And of course, all the security cameras pictured here are actually fake, only serving as deterrents. Fake cameras also have the added benefit of not requiring power, network access, subscriptions, or agreement to terms and conditions. I wonder if they make light switches like that. Well, they do, and they're cheaper. Let's look back at the CG smart home I made. It would cost around $2,500 for those smart parts to be implemented. This includes lights, light switches, vents, blinds, a door lock, and a thermostat. In comparison, 
the same amount of traditional home appliances would go for about $750. But this isn't really a fair comparison, as houses are usually sold with these essential appliances included. Realistically, homeowners would not need to purchase their own light switches and vents, in most cases at least. Keep in mind that the smart home I'm showcasing doesn't include any smart speakers, smart home security, or exterior devices like sprinklers. Adding those would only make the price difference between traditional homes and smart homes increase. The unattractive price of a smart home compounds with the other issues of compatibility and security to create what I like to call the Achilles heel of the smart home. I know, I'm very original, I'm the first person to call anything the Achilles heel of anything. While it may look cool in the CG concept, and sound cool in theory, most people are content using switches to turn on lights. And when I pulled my Instagram followers, only 24% of the respondents said they would buy a smart home. And given the issues of compatibility, security, and cost, it's not easy to see why most people don't want to buy a smart home. And these issues have not only made smart homes unattractive to purchase, but also uninteresting for most people. If nobody cares about a piece of technology, then it really has a rough future ahead of it, if it even has a future at all. Nothing says it better than the Wikipedia page for Bill Gates' mansion. Even though the headline feature for this mansion is its smart home technology, all that's written is, the 66,000 square foot mansion incorporates technology in its design. Clarification needed.